Hello, welcome. This is a premiere episode of the Artistic Spirit. Welcome, we're very excited to have you here. My name is Robin Holliday and I am the owner and curator of Horse Spirit Arts Gallery. I have the privilege of representing 46 local artists and tonight you're going to meet one of them, found object sculptor Bill Knapp. I wanna let you know the gallery is located in historic Ellicott City, Maryland, which is a wonderful place, an excellent community and a very cool place to visit. But before I go into any more detail, I want to introduce you to Rob Hicks. He's the co-owner of Enlightened Audiovisual. He is the brainchild behind this series. He thought of the idea and he is the producer behind the scenes that is making it possible. So Rob, welcome. Hey, how are you? Good. So premiere episode number one, I'm so excited for you. I'm sorry, say it again? I said your premiere episode uh, number one, I'm excited for you. Thank you, thank you. Will you tell everybody how you thought of the idea for this? So I've been doing live streaming for uh, a little over a year, but I remember during the, the flood, because uh, I was actually downtown in Ellicott City periscoping uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the the destruction that was happening. And, you know, a after that had happened, I'm like, there's got to be a way that we can use live streaming to, to, to have some local relevance. And it, and what was interesting is, is that I reached out to a, about 40 businesses in, in on Main Street saying, hey, if you guys want to leverage live streaming to promote your GoFundMe pages or just simply want to use it as an opportunity to communicate with your uh, with your followers, what's going on? I'll give this to you guys for free, and you know, nobody nobody took me up on it. But I think it was because nobody understood what it was that I was offering. So you know, and it, so it's just been a process, right? I mean, even even you and I, uh, uh, you know, know each other well over a year. It, it took it took you three months to be able to finally. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it did. It sure did. Yeah, so it's a process, but so we got a few people in the chat that I want to say hi to. Uh, Candy Sakai is here. Uh, Candy is one of my awesome pals from Japan, uh, Tokyo, Japan, and she is an amazing uh, photographer. So Candy's in here, and uh, Luke Crownover says this looks great. Oh, uh, that's my son. Oh, okay, cool. And let's see, Live Media Guy says look forward to seeing this premiere episode. Um, so one bit of housekeeping, if uh, I see that April, uh, Rimpo, uh, and 13 other people are in the chat, but if you don't leave a comment, we can't see who you are, so we can't say hi to you uh, by name. Wonderful. Well, thank yeah. you, Rob. Thanks so much sure. for making it possible. A little bit about the gallery. So 46 local artists were local, primarily Howard County, but on occasion I went outside, but all the artists live within about 20 to 25 miles. So it's very exciting, Ellicott City, um, Howard County to have their own art scene. Baltimore has theirs, DC has theirs. So, so here we go. Um, I'd like to introduce you to our premier artist for the first series, which is um, found object sculptor, Bill Knapp. He's a very accomplished sculptor. Um, his pieces show his refined technique, as well as a sense of whimsy. So let me introduce you without further ado to the special tonight, Bill Knapp. Bill, welcome. Hey, Robin, how are you tonight? I'm good, how about yourself? Very well. You're standing in your studio, it looks awesome. I am, it's, uh, it's uh, pretty warm tonight, which is a good thing. So tell me, Tell us all about your art. I know all about what you do, but people have tuned in and they really want to hear. So tell us. Well, I'm a found object sculptor and I've been doing it for uh, over 30 years. I find things uh, all over the place and people bring me things also. They know that I uh, do this work and they hate to see things be sent to the dump when they know they can be, we'll say, upcycled. Um, I like to make things uh, oftentimes look like they existed at some point in time that they didn't really. Uh, other times I lean towards humorous things that look, uh, you know, just something that puts a smile on your face. I think uh, there's just not enough stuff in this world to make you smile. So 
Um, that's a good good element to bring out. Uh, and, you know, trying to make some things strictly sculpture is fine. Other times I make uh, utilitarian tables and wine bottle holders and things that uh, serve a purpose as well. So That's wonderful. Bill, really, people just love your art. It's both artistic and functional and are, I am ready to go on the field trip of your gallery. Are you ready? I am. All right, here we go. Let's see some video. So, well, so Bill, well, why don't you tell us what we're looking at? Well, this is the exterior of my studio and this is, uh, this is a piece I made uh, a few years back. Um, it was at the door. Um, we're coming inside. Uh, you're looking across the way at a uh, work table I have. Uh, and right now I have, there's uh, my welder, my TIG welder. Um, we're back outside. <laughs> and that piece right there is one of years ago. It's a uh, two figures that were uh, lying down looking up at the uh, stars. And I decided I could actually hang it on the side of the building and it worked just as well. So we're coming into the studio. There's my TIG welder. Uh, we're making my way, way around uh, the back of the studio. There's uh, the forge that I use. Um, I use it mostly for uh, heating metals and bending them as opposed to uh, blacksmithing. I'm not really a blacksmith. There's a snowman that I made for a client a couple of years ago that she has it in here to have new mittens made for it. Uh, there's two new lights that I just finished a couple weeks ago that uh, I got them uh, the lights from an auction and figured them out a couple uh, months ago. This is a wine bottle holder uh, that I put together right before Christmas. Um, this is uh, this is a piece uh, that's actually just a part, uh, and it just looks so cool that I just had to put it out there. Uh, this is another wine bottle holder. Um, coming around to my radio arm saw, there is my TIG, uh, MIG welder. We're definitely on a cruise here. <laughs> okay, this is a, a commission piece I'm making for a coffee table for a client. Um, it has sort of a vehicle uh, feel to it uh, with some old electrical insulators for headlights. Uh, it's got uh, some steel wheels and uh, a coil spring off of a car to sort of keep your eye moving through the piece. There is a pressure gauge just to uh, have the feel of once again, an old car kind of feel. It also has down in there a piece of a faultless uh, sewing machine that I believe Robin gave me. <laughs> I have no idea how you came up with that. That is the coolest piece, Bill. And when I gave you those sewing machine parts, I had no idea that in one you'd make a car out of, and the other one's already in the gallery. You have a man that's made out of the side of the sewing machine. You are just incredibly clever. Well, so thank thanks, so. so um, we're making our way down into my parts department. There's my uh, drill press, got to have the right tools. Um, and these are shelves and boxes full of found objects, just uh, inventory to pull together, to uh, inspire me to make whatever comes to mind. Or if I'm looking for a certain part, a headlight or something, uh, I have plenty to choose from to, to find that, that particular piece. So, so that, uh, that was the quick route through the uh, studio, just what I've got in there now. Um, That's so awesome, Bill. You have to tell us, how do you find the inspiration for a piece? I mean, how does that happen? Because when I gave you a sewing machine, I had no idea what was going to happen. So how do you figure it out? Well, I think a lot of, most of the time, you know, if you were to go outside and lay down and look up at the clouds, you would see things in the clouds. And it's, to me, it's no different. I look at the parts and it may uh, look like a coil spring to one person, but you know, I see it as 
you know, something, something different, something uh, that other that I can match somewhere else in my history that I've seen before. And once I get started on, on what I think it looks like, well, then I can find the, the accompanying parts to, to bring that whole piece together. So um, I just think it's uh, a matter of, you know, I see things in the parts that uh, lead me to uh, do light. So. Well, that is the true soul of an artist, that you can see a disparate object and create art. Listen, there's a couple of questions. So Rob, can you help us with that? All right, so let's see here. Let me go to the chat. So, uh, Wendy W N G says, uh, "Yes, Bill Knapp, your artwork does uh, make me smile. I love the whimsical elements of what you." And unfortunately, I can't read the rest of the comment because it's dotted. Um, and uh, Carlos Zepeda is joined uh, from Belize. Oh, uh, how great! <laughs> it's pretty crazy. So, um, and. Let's see. Whoops. So, but, the, but those are the one I wanted to, to pass over Wendy's comment because I think that was pretty cool. So, I wish you guys could... that's what? wonderful. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, Bill, where do you find your objects? I mean, they're really amazing. I know I've brought you some, but I mean, where do these things come from? Well, people bring them to me, just like you say, you do too. Um, Nearby is a truck repair place that lets me raid their uh, recycle dumpster. Um, auctions uh, I go to, there is the Antique Depot in Ellicott City. Um, there is eBay, there is Etsy. Um, if I you know, really need to find something in particular, uh, I usually go to the internet sites because uh, you can find everything on the internet. Um, so, uh, I think that that covers most of it, but I get a lot of a lot of stuff that just shows up here. I'll show up at my door one morning, and here will be I have two plows, antique plows that somebody left at my door. They're still so big and heavy. I'm still not exactly sure uh, what piece they'll go at. It would have to be a outside sculpture of some sort, but uh, you know they'll get used. So. so, Bill, when I was in your studio today, there were some car parts that I had no idea what they were. Can you tell us about them? Well, uh, you know, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna pick one up that I know you like. You know, and these are the kind of things that, you know, I pull out of a recycled dumpster and they can be uh, made into, you know, they could be, it could be a wheel for a car. It could be a steering wheel. It could be uh, the, the parts of a bird bath. It could be so many different things. Uh, it has such a cool look. Um, I think another one you liked was, uh, you liked this chain, didn't you? Yes, very much so. <laughs> oh, that so, looks fabulous. Can I sell you in the gallery? You can. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So there are, uh, there are lots of places and I, to, to get things. And I know there were many pieces in here that, uh, that you, that you liked, including the gates over there, um, a, a pair of church gates. That, uh, that oh, I, they're, uh, beautiful. They're, they're beautiful. They're beautiful. So I have, I have one more piece I'll show you. For all those guys out there that wonder what kind of valve this would go in an engine, an engine valve. So, you know, there are some parts that are uh, so good, it's hard to use. So how big is the vehicle that that would have come out of? Well, I would think it would be something like a locomotive or a ship of some sort would be wow. another, yeah. Wow, so it's not just the art, it's just looking at the cool pieces and just being amazed. Well, that's that's half the, half the fun of being in the found object uh, artist is finding the work, is finding the parts. You know, oftentimes it's a search uh, to find a certain piece for a certain part. Other times it's like finding a chunk of gold, at, uh, you know, at the bottom of a, uh, a barrel somewhere. So, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to, uh, to find the parts. That is well, so great. Well, as utilize them into a finished piece. So. Well, that's awesome. So Rob is going to show some pictures right now and Bill, we're going to have you describe them. Okay. Okay. Here we go.
Rob's giving it his best shot. Hang tight. There you go. Well, as you know, I've made uh, a lot of small pieces that I sell at your gallery. And uh, this is one that uh, is, uh, I look at it like it's a camel, perhaps. Um, and I, it uses uh, engine valves out of a car for the legs. Uh, and then it has half of a gear for the back. And uh, the head came from uh, some, uh, what were they? At the Oella mill, they were uh, links in a chain that would pull the coal into the mill. And that's a head off of one of them. That has some real history to it. This is a piece that I know Rob liked. Um, that uh, it's, I look at it as rather steampunk type of feel to it. It's an old, it's an old gauge, and I've uh, gotten some leg uh, from actually a local uh, manufacturer, and put it together with a uh, with a uh, handle to, to to look like you can adjust it, and a ball underneath. And actually, I think that one might have a uh, electrical uh, insulator on it and a wire, so it just has this feel. As I said earlier, like like it's made to do something, like it existed at one point in time. Uh, to do a certain job, but actually it's a small table for in your living room or something. So it's, uh, uh, you know, this one I've used a lot of uh, balloons in my work. Um, I've had, perhaps it's uh, how old I am, I have had a fascination with the movie years ago, The Red Balloon, a French movie, in which the red balloon follows this boy through town and it isn't much dialogue. And so I've made a number of pieces with red balloons. This in particular, uh, I just had a piece of a cut off post, a metal post, which is what that house is, comes out of, and a shoe on the bottom. I got hold of some uh, bronzed baby shoes. And that's one of the bronze baby shoes that I, I think you can get them. Uh, even on eBay, you can find bronze baby shoes. So Bill, what's the title of that piece? I think that was, uh, she's leaving home. That's so sweet. Hey, tell us about the red, because in much of your art, you use red. Well, you know, I used to have my studio at Clipper Industrial Park uh, many decades ago, it seems. And uh, there was a part of, the, a part of the industrial part where the roof had caved in. And I went searching around in that area and found under a huge pile of roof a stack of red wheels. Like there was a company that made red wheels and uh, the roof caved in and they left and left all the wheels there. So I started making a series with red wheels of mostly table bases. And then the red went from the table, the wheels, started going into my pieces uh, through time. So I, at this point, I put red in almost all of the pieces that I make all up to date. Uh, I'll say maybe 75% of them I try and put some red in, and it's sort of my, uh, it is sort of my, I feel like it's part of my uh, mark on the pieces, my signature. I guess that's a good way to put it. Yeah, that's great. Hey, uh, hey, Bill. So, so Lori Hansen uh, says, your work is incredible, Bill. Now, love the new faultless sled table. I'm watching from MSP Airport. This is great. <laughs> well, Lori's a great person. She uh, used to share the studio upstairs uh, with her here. <clears throat> So uh, we have a great opportunity here, and I think uh, Robin's heading it up at this point. So that's a great thing. Bill, tell us about this piece. This is a, uh, a table that I made, and it starts at the bottom with some pieces of a uh, guardrail, or the legs for it. And I got them because my son was in the Cub Scouts, and we had to do a stream cleanup. And we found these chunks of guardrail down in the stream. So that's how they came to me. I got the, uh, the dog, which is a playground piece of equipment, like you would sit on it and rock back and forth. I got that at an auction. Uh, there's the red ball. And then uh, the glass, it has a glass top on it. And they sit up there on some metal uh, cattails. And uh, I think I call this one dog park. Was it remarkable? Yeah. Remind you have to take the red ball and toss it, and the dog will go jump through the weeds and over the guardrail to get his red ball. That is such a great name. Thanks. Such a great name. 
Ah, here's the other part of my sewing machine. Tell us about this. Well, this one uh, is, is as, as you say, it came from, it's the left half of the sewing machine base that you had given me. And I think when I had taken it apart, I just saw um, it had this great uh, chest, <laughs> the way the metal was cut, which gave me this feeling that it just should be a figurative piece. And so I just started to run with that and added the legs onto the bottom and the feet uh, and the arms. And he's got a, uh, a head and I think his hat all the way up top is silver and when my uh when my mother passed away many years ago i ended up getting all the family silver which i had no interest in and obviously none of my siblings did and uh so it went into my inventory here mm -hmm. and some of it goes out into the artwork that i make as time goes on wow but that is so cool I don't know how you come up with these things, but I am absolutely and truly impressed. You know, your work has sold very well at the gallery. In particular, I'm just struck by every time you bring me a wine holder, like right. one time you brought me a wine holder that had, um, it's like a paper cutter and you had made it into a wine holder. Both times you did that, you put them on the counter and they sold within a few hours. I mean, I didn't even get to put them out. That's how cool they were. Well, I, it makes me feel good that people appreciate my work that much that, uh, you know, that it's, it moves that quickly. So I appreciate all those people that uh, have bought my work in the past. And, you know, I hope I can keep up with the, uh, with the good, good, good feelings that uh, they send me every time I buy it. So, well, I hear from customers who have bought your birds, which are just um, adorable, actually. Can you tell people how you make those birds? Well, the birds are usually made uh, a railroad spike for a body. And my son and I would go down to the railroad tracks and walk the railroad tracks and look over on the sides and find discarded uh, spikes and pick them up. And they end up back here in my inventory. And then it has uh, engine valves for legs. Uh, oftentimes it has a hammer for a head and uh, I usually try and throw something in, something extra in, which might be some feathers coming off the back, uh, made with some uh, ornamental metalwork or something, so. And the color red. And the color red, yes, <laughs> yes. The other thing I wanna point out is I asked um, for ballerinas and because you had made one, oh, there's a bird, there's a bird. I had asked for some ballerinas because yep. you made one and it sold very quickly and now, I have so many people coming in buying your little ballerinas. What are they made from? You know, the ballerinas are made, uh, the larger ones are made from a fireplace poker. The handle from a fireplace poker uh, is perfect because it has the, the round head on it. Um, and then I will uh, put two, I think the last one had uh, old nails coming out for arms. Um, you like the bun hairstyle in the back. I have a, a small uh, ball, uh, quarter inch ball that I weld on the back of the head for a bun haircut. Uh, I have to put a washer for a dress, a skirt, and then I put a, uh, a drill bit that comes down at the bottom to you know look like she's spinning. So to give it a little motion. And, uh, and then the base is, is I try to make the bases kind of look like some of them kind of look like the trail that uh, she was dancing. Like. So, yeah, the, you've been, uh, you don't seem to be able to hold on to those things very long. No, and honestly, I, as you know, I purchased one of them myself. I just love her. So, um, um hey, Charlene Randolph just hopped in, and uh, so we want to make sure we say hi to, uh, to Charlene. Oh, hey, Charlene, welcome to the show. We're glad to have you here. Hey, Bill, is there anything else you'd like to tell people? Uh, you know, uh, I, I want to tell them that I have a lot of pieces in your gallery right now, and they should come down and check them all out, along with all the other work that's down there. Um, I am here in Ellicott City, and, uh, you know, I'm glad to get the word out to everybody that, uh, you know, 
there's some good positive artwork going on in, in Elephant City and glad everybody could tune in tomorrow. Thank you, Bill. That was great. And I'm so glad that you're part of the gallery. You're just, actually, you're just a blessing. So um, before we close, I would like to let you know that in addition to Bill's art, you know, there are the 46 or 45 other local artists. And in the gallery is a wide range of art. Um, there's everything from fine paintings, to oils, watercolors, pastels. There's drawings, there's fiber art, wood turning. Um, obviously the found object sculptor, there's wearable art. Um, and I view art very broadly. And so one thing I hope for this show is one I would like you to meet all the artists in the gallery and just see their creative spirit. And my hope is that it will inspire the creativity in you. When you come to the gallery, I also hope that you take a break from the world. Just immerse yourself in art and just think all about creativity and how, how glad you are to be there. I want you to leave the gallery feeling better than you did when you came in. So next week, we're gonna host a painter, April Rimpo. And April uses fluid acrylics and watercolors. And that's just gonna be a fabulous show. It'll be next Thursday night at seven o'clock. So before we end, I would like to thank, I would like to thank Rob. And it, it sounds like we have some questions. So Rob, over to you. All right, so, oh, so I just wanted to, uh, you have a couple comments that came in. So Deborah uh, Mikulowski. Yep. Uh, so she says, this is fascinating. Thank you for doing this. And Charlene says, you guys are awesome, and I'm so glad to see you do this. Oh, wonderful. Well, I am honored to represent all of the artists, and I can't wait to have them on the show. So, Rob, I really thank you for coming up with this idea and kind of encouraging me, quote, unquote, to do it, because you had to encourage hard. And, and I'm so glad we're doing this. It's such an opportunity to promote the arts in Ellicott City and to promote Ellicott City, which is such a wonderful town, and promote arts in Howard County and the larger community. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you yes. next Thursday at 7 o'clock. We'll see you guys. Hey, Vincenzo, thank you very much for tuning in. He just hopped in at the last second. So thank you, guys. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.